Hey guys. So I had the second to last presentation, um, Roberto Bolaños and Moore's Life. Second to last one. You guys, we got this. We are going to kick Honors World Lit behind. I wish you all luck on your final essay and the final and everything. We're all going to do fabulous, especially since we have nothing to do, even though it's still super stressful not being able to do anything. But I digress. So, Roberto Bologna, he was born in 1953 in Santiago, Chile. He was born during a dictatorship. Um, he dropped out of high school. And after the dictator lost reign of power or whatever, he went to jail. A friend from high school broke him out of jail, and then he lived in exile because he was actually a leftist, a socialist, and part of the regime was getting rid of all the liberals, I guess. So he lived in exile. He moved around Mexico, France, Spain. He was writing. He was a novelist, short story writer, essay writer, a poet. He was an all-around writer. He also worked some low-paying jobs along the way. He became a very influential writer. He was one of the leading South American literary figures at the turn of the 21st century. But sadly, he died in 2003 of liver failure. Um, even after he died, he won some awards for being an outstanding um writer, literary figure. He, his most recent award, I think, was in 2005, two years after he died. And one of these series that he wrote was Last Evenings on Earth. And this is actually the book that Anne Moore's life was a part of. So Last Evenings on Earth was published in 1997. It's a series of, I think, 14 chapters, stories, books, or whatever, and they're all different narrators that are telling a story. Um, and it's during the uh, book takes place during the time of the Chilean exile. Um, and forced exile is kind of a big part of it because uh, he was basically forced to move around and he was kind of like a fugitive and um so the book takes place while he's doing this and basically in the 1990s and so although Anne Moore's life does not take place necessarily well Anne Moore isn't part of the Chilean culture it kind of swings back around and it has some of the same themes that Bologna was going through in his life. So a summary of Anne Moore's life. It's a story of a woman, Anne Moore, and it's told from the perspective of a future lover, somebody that was infatuated with her. It's basically kind of told in summary. Um, so Anne Moore is a woman. She um, moved a lot. She had a lot of relationships with different people. Um, we find out about her relationship with her sister and her parents and multiple romantic relationships and we find out whether she's satisfied or dissatisfied with the relationships sexually and socially and just a lot of different aspects of relationships and how she is very quick to up and leave relationships. She would physically pack up and leave, flee, go to a different country, basically start up a new life. And she had a lot of long-term relationships. The story actually ends kind of with the narrator and hers relationship or lack thereof he has an intimate happening with Anne and then she 
up in leaves, as she does. And so the narrator, B, does not know where she went and tries to figure it out, goes to this old Russian guy that Anne um, had a platonic relationship with and asked where she went and all he has is like a postcard or something and then the narrator does not know where she is and that's how it ends. So the story is told in summary, which kind of gives a sense of intimacy between like the reader and what is going on. It's kind of like I just sat down and some random person is just telling me a story in public or something. Um, and it's told from afar, so it's kind of, there's like a separation because it's not told by Anne, it's told by this narrator. And so, I think that there's kind of a disassociation between that. One of my questions actually was, how would the story be different if Anne was writing the story as opposed to a narrator, as opposed to a man, as opposed to somebody that was infatuated with her? I wonder how it would have been different. Would she have wanted different parts of her life um, to be emphasized rather than her sexual relations? Or maybe that was something that she wanted to emphasize and that's why it was something that she related to the, to the narrator. But I think that's kind of an interesting thing to think about. Also, no like one event in the story was more prominent than the other. There wasn't a climax. Like I said, the other stories were like that. Um, and it was, there were a lot of things that happened, but nothing seemed to be more important than the other. We seem to know more about her sexual relationships than we do about the disease that she ends up getting. Like, how do we not know what disease she has? How do we not know um, other basic things about her life, but we know about her satisfactory with different men and um also her boyfriend kills himself and that was just like one sentence and then it moved on so it was very just like no emotion basically and that goes along with one of the themes is that it was very austere vague nothing seemed to have greater weight than anything else um so, a lot of the themes can be kind of looped back to living in exile and how Roberto Bologna felt with his life. Um, but another theme was that I found that a bunch of different um, blog posts actually did like reviews of Anne Moore's life and people were kind of anxiety ridden about it. Um, they kind of felt... Like, when is Anne going to just get married and start a life and have everything figured out already, you know? And I feel like that kind of goes along with um, kind of resisting... Well, the theme for Roberto Bologna was resisting the world, and I think it's kind of resisting society. Like, why? why is everybody kind of anxious? And even if it's not like consciously it's kind of subconsciously like we're kind of like what it what is going on and then we find out she's almost 40 and we're like oh my gosh like she's still having like escapades with like different men and leaving the country and stuff like that and I feel like even if we're very open society that's not normal you know and I think that the world is kind of painted a picture of what normalcy is and the fact that Anne is not following that to such an extent almost that some people can feel anxious about it. Like, maybe I didn't feel that personally, but at one point I was like, oh my gosh, she's almost 40. Like, and then I thought about myself at being almost 40 and I didn't want to be in the middle of Spain with some random guy. And that's kind of how I feel like she was resisting society and how women are supposed to be and I feel like part of it is women versus men I feel like if it was a man that we were reading about being in all of these relationships and flings and stuff like that we wouldn't be as 
aware of how different it was. Um, another theme is dislocation, relocation, how she was going from this place to this place, Seattle, California, Mexico, Spain, like, kind of how Bologna had to move around as well, living in exile, and how he had to change lives as well. Same as Anne, basically, up and just left and never really had a steady, steady life. Um, so, like, how it was written, it was in kind of excruciating detail. I remember starting reading it and I was like oh my goodness like why do I need to know this you know and it was kind of like I mentioned before emotionless it was kind of numb um it was kind of vague kind of almost austere kind of like well yeah it's just somebody rambling on and on and it kind of goes back to the theme of being in exile and how Bologna felt not necessarily what he was physically doing, relocating and stuff like that, but how he felt about how numb it was and how vague it was and how one thing happened after the other and nothing really was exciting per se. And also the way that it was written like that, it, because nothing was necessarily, like a lot was happening, but nothing really sparked any emotion. It was just kind of on and on and I feel like it gave extra time to contemplate and extra time to think while you were reading it if that makes any sense like you weren't afraid that you were necessarily going to miss anything and so um the style that style it kind of subjects you to an experience and that experience is part of the theme of Bologna so like that experience of just going through the motions kind of it wasn't even when they talked about a life-changing thing like a disease or somebody dying like it was very just moving on to the next thing moving on to the next city moving on to the next guy and that kind of was an experience almost like reading reading it was feeling like Bologna felt like that nothing really happened and that nothing superseded anything else in his life and that he had to live different places and different cultures and stuff like that so that is my take on Roberto Bologna other people's takes on Roberto Bologna and overall I think that it's very interesting how he was able to portray how he felt through abstract kind of ideas you know like he didn't go out and like this isn't an autobiography of how he felt but somehow through somebody completely different a narrator that's not necessarily him a person that may not have even ever existed somehow we're able to grasp on how he was feeling and how his life proceeded after he was living in exile how we can kind of pick up those things just through writing it wasn't anything literary necessarily like it wasn't metaphors or um rhythm as far as poetry is concerned like it was just a story that you could hear at the bar from some random guy and somehow were able to pick up on how an individual was feeling during such a crazy time and how unsatisfied he was with his life and everything and how we're able to pick that up just through just through a story about a woman named Ann Moore who liked to have a lot of relationships with people and break a lot of hearts so yeah that is it
hopefully I did a satisfactory job and I miss you guys even though I enjoy being at home I do not enjoy social distancing and I would rather be talking to you guys about about this final and everything but we got the group chat so it's okay goodbye <laughs>